19. He said the following on the occasion of its opening. Correctional services has a mandate to create a human system where the weakest inmates feel safe, where all are treated with respect. It is a new generation correctional center with an approved bed capacity of 512 inmates. It also has a hospital section. As precaution and in line with the COVID-19 measures, the former president will be placed in isolation for a period of 14 days. Furthermore, he will be assessed by our medical team in conjunction with the South African Health Military Services, and this will determine the conditions of his incarceration. This assessment is done to determine the major risks and needs of the offender. A complete profile report will then be submitted with recommendations to the case management committee in line with all the assessments that have to be done. And this is an assessment that is done to all inmates upon their admission in any correctional facility. This process will assist to determine the appropriate classification of the former president in the facility. All these systems are in place to ensure that the incarceration is done in a manner which is not retributive but humane. It should be noted that in terms of Section 736A of the Correctional Services Act, an offender serving a determined or cumulative sentence of not more than 24 months may not be placed on parole or day parole until such an offender has served either the stipulated non-parole period. If a non-parole period was stipulated a quarter of the sentence, in this case, there is no stipulation for the non-parole period. This effectively means that the former president will be eligible for parole once a quarter of his sentence has been served. We want to assure all South Africans that former President Zuma will be afforded dignity throughout his term of incarceration. I thank you. Thank you very much, Minister. Um, I will then take a row of hands. I'll start with the ones that are here with us. Um, if you can raise your hand, please, if you want to ask a question so that we can note five hands at the goal. So I take it we're only having two questions. Okay, that's better. Um, so start with, uh, I saw your hand was asking that. Samkele. Samkele. Um, so my brother from PMCA. Um, so I can't see you behind the scenes. Um, please start by introducing yourself, the media house that you're from, and you'll be the last time I sit there. And straight to the point with your question, please. Okay, the Namibia from Newsroom, Africa. Minister, earlier yesterday we saw, oh, in fact, in the early hours of this morning, we saw an ambulance arrive in Uganda. I suppose you had an opportunity to see the former president. How is he doing? Are there any concerns surrounding his health? And when you look at his age and his health condition, can he be released earlier than a quarter of that sentence? So that's two questions. One. Okay. Sankele? Uh, Minister Sankele, Mr. Rudy from the SABC. When you speak of the former president being eligible for parole once he served a quarter of his sentence, is the current administration looking at giving the former president that parole once he served, I think, four, uh, four months of his incarceration? And then lastly, what then happens on Friday? Should the Supreme High Court say it's got the necessary jurisdiction to stay the arrest of the former president? Do you then release him as the Department of Correctional Services? And lastly, Mr. Arthur Fraser, you are a known ally of former President Jacob Zuma. Will you be making sure that your ally is well taken care of in this facility? Thank you. Okay. I'm Graham Miller from ENCA. Just um, the first few minister, the order, the committal order was given to Westfield Prison. Why did, did that not happen? Why is it here at the escort uh, prison? Also around the assessment, isn't that supposed to be done within six hours? Why does it seem to be a longer process for the former president? And just for the skeptical South Africans who say we want evidence that the, 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 the president is in prison, we want to see that he's in prison, um, is there maybe an opportunity to get that? Thank you, Mr. Christine from DWS. Um, I Okay, 
Okay, thank you for that. Um, colleagues, I take it you've all been listening to the questions. I'll give to the officials first minister to answer um, the questions which fall within their relevant expertise. And then if there are any other outstanding questions that may require clarification from yourself, minister, you may then proceed to clarify. Okay. Uh, th th thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, now the former president is, uh, uh, as the minister has said in his statement, housed in a, in a. Uh, hospital section and uh, for assessment I think there was a question of uh, assessment within six hours you may have heard the minister saying that uh, the health issues of the former president uh, is done in conjunction with the South African military health services as we speak now they are co completing that process minister have also said that they arrived in the early hours of today and uh, I think we are complying with that. We have, we have, we have complied with that. We have followed the normal administrative processes, and uh, they are attending to the uh, assessment of, of the uh, former president as prescribed. Uh, thank you very much to the members of the media. I just want to indicate that. Um, the former president is not getting any preferential treatment within the facility. He will be treated like any other offender that is within our facility. That's one. Two, I think it is important to indicate that once a person gets handed over to our facility, we take full responsibility as a department. So security arrangements of the former president becomes the responsibility of the department not that of the SAPS, the protection services of SAPS. So we are taking care of security arrangements of the president as the Department of Correctional Services. So those are the issues that I needed to clarify. The operational issues will be dealt with with the head of center because these things are managed at an operational level. Uh, I want to end there. Can, can you deal with the question of um, eligibility of parole, if it's something that you will be... It. Yeah, she will be dealing with that, because those are the operational issues that I would want. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, protocol observed. Uh, one, the issue I want to, to stress and reiterate on the issue of assessment. There is uh, procedures that are followed. One first assessment is called an immediate assessment, whereby we, we, we take the, the immediate needs as to what is it, is he, is he healthy, does he take any medication and what else. That is within six, six hours that was mentioned. Then the full holistic as assessment that is taken during the process of in-depth assessments. That's why you, you hear that there's a word assessment being brought up now and again because there's immediate and the holistic one which is in-depth. In terms of e-parole, yes, is, uh, all, of, all, all inmates or offenders that, that are, are sentenced, they, are, they, they run through the same process and their data are calculated according to the stipulations of Correctional Services Act. So he is also subjected to that procedure whereby he's, he's calculated if the sentence falls under the procedures of that he qualifies for a quota, then he will be subjected to that quota. If it's half, half like the minister has mentioned, there are no stipulations of non-parole period, non period. So he'll be subjected as any other offender. And yeah, I think that, that, is, that is all from my side. In terms of e operations and the safety, there is a, a special operations that is, is, is employed in the, on site, which is taking care of, of, the, of the site 24-7, which we, uh, we cannot divulge much of the nitty of securities, but the security is in place, which is here 24-7. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, the first question that was directed to me was whether I have seen the former president and uh, how is he? Yes, I have seen him. He is in very good spirit and um, he has taken uh, his breakfast, he's taking his medication and um, he is, um, as I've said, he, he spoke and I also told him that I'm going to tell the nation that uh, 
he is here in this facility and he said it's important that this country must know so he's in very good spirit and uh, i think um, he looks uh, well and fine and uh, i hope that uh, the south african uh, military health services and our health services here will continue to to deal with these health issues uh, to ensure that uh, his incarceration is human and also his health issues are attended to on the um, on the issue of what will happen when the, the Peter Marisberg um, uh, High Court makes a ruling tomorrow, uh, we will cross the bridge when we reach there. Uh, and that's why uh, it's a judgment. We all don't know what the judgment is going to be. So we will await the, the judgment. And uh, upon uh, release of the judgment, we'll study the judgment. And then it will direct us what to do. Uh, uh, so, so that's what we're going to do with regards to the to the Peter Marisberg um, uh, High Court ruling, including the ruling that may come out uh, in the Corn Court in the hearing that is going to happen on Monday. We also don't know when the Corn Court will make its ruling. So we will uh, await and be guided by the, by the court order of the Constitutional Court also in that regard. So we are going to observe, obey, and be directed by what the court says. With regards to <clears throat> why uh, his committal a uh, warrant of a uh, committal uh, is in uh, it's uh, is in devon westville and he has been brought here uh, the, the warrant of committal is not for the devon westville it was sent to the head of the of the of the devon of the devon westville uh, center and uh, in this regard uh, it's a uh, uh, it's uh, also sent to the head of uh, correctional services in the province of wazulda so it does not state that he must be incarcerated in Westville. You will remember that the order had also spoken about Johannesburg uh, Police Station and Nkandla Police Station. So if he was in Johannesburg, we would have also had to incarcerate him somewhere, either in Johannesburg or here in Wazul Natal. So the National Commissioner and the Regional Commissioner, they decide uh, on the basis of the of the risk of the offender and the various assessment that they do where must a, which offender go to which uh, facility and in terms of the correctional services act the national commissioner is empowered to decide anywhere a, 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 an offender can be and hence you will find our offenders from uh, peter marisbeck being sent to mataji in limpo in limpompo and uh, you can find uh, an offender from pumalanga being sent to the northern cape is because the correctional services act does allow us, based on our assessment, to take an offender where we believe, in terms of their risk profile, in terms of what the, the, the needs are, to be taken to any facility. And in this regard, uh, this facility is also nearer to the former president's home in Ganja. It's, it has got many other advantages that will enable a, a human uh, and a dignified incarceration. Uh, with regards to uh, I think the privileges has al already been, uh, been, 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 been taken care of. What I can add that you may not be aware of is that Correctional Services owns hotels. We have got guest houses across the country. And uh, one of our best hotels is in Devon. Uh, what is that uh, one? Karadine. That we run with the Protea? Karadine Hotel. Karadine Hotel in, in Devon. Very beautiful in Umshang. So if we wanted the former president to stay in a hotel and in a highly privileged area, we would have taken him to the hotel in Karadin there in, 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 um, in, the, in the south coast. Or we would have taken him to one of our beautiful guest houses, breathtaking in the Western Cape, where you can even see the sea. Even that one of Karadin is next to the sea. We have got these guest houses across the country. But the policies and the Correctional Services Act is clear. He must be incarcerated where it's declared an, a, 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 a correctional facility in terms of incarceration. Because the guest houses and the hotels that we have are not declared as incarceration uh, facilities and so forth. So hence, there is no policy, no law that would have allowed us to do that. But we have ensured that we comply with the Correctional Services Act and the policies and the laws of this country when we took him here. Because it is within the policies and it is within the Correctional Services Act. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. I'll go on to the oh, WhatsApp. There's a question uh, that uh, some can ask uh, <laughs> about the National Commissioner. Uh, I think it will be unfair for him to, to answer it on his behalf. 
de, 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 de as I've said, the incarceration of the of the former president or of any inmate, we are administering it in terms of the act. There is no favoritism. Whether he's my enemy or he's my friend or he's my brother or he's my father, he's my uncle or he's my political faction or my non-political faction, it, it is neither here nor there. We are administering all processes guided by the Correctional Services Act. Thank you. We'll ask questions from WhatsApp now. Um, but it looks like there's a follow-up, so let's allow... Yeah, just a skeptic yeah. minister that says that they want to see evidence that the, the, the former president is in prison. Just to add on maybe oh, what, okay. what will happen on the 19th of July when he's meant to go back um, to court? How will he go back? Will it, be, will it be with the Presidential Protection Unit or the Department of Correctional Services um, Unit? Oh, I see. Okay. No, unfortunately... Uh, we can't uh, take pictures of inmates uh, or videos. And uh, I, I think some of you have accompanied us to our facilities in some instances. And we're always saying you, you, you cannot take their videos or you can't take their pictures. But you can take our word that he is indeed in this facility. And I've seen some of you in the morning when they brought him in here, you are here. So there's no reason why we can lie to South Africans that he is inside here while he's uh, hiding somewhere. We, th there is no reason whatsoever. Uh, it's, it's, that could be up to him if he wants to take a picture and, and uh, he takes it out and so forth. But from our systems, um, we have administered and we can confirm that we have, um, we have uh, processed his stay inside here. He is in this facility. Uh, we, 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 in terms of pictures, uh, unfortunately, we, we, we can't do that and we don't do it with any other offender. Mr. Oh, they're traveling to courts. With the current uh, risk-adjusted uh, approach in terms of courts, you will be aware that with some of the cases of remanding and so forth, we do it through what we call video conferencing uh, from time to time because of the risk of our inmates going into the, into the courts. So it will also depend whether does he, we could make arrangements for him to go to court uh, in the Peter Marisbeck High Court, whether there is a need or not, depending on whether it's a trial or not. So there's various assessments that are being done. So during this period, we try to minimize as far as possible for our inmates not to be moving at, up and down of, our, of these facilities. Hence, we're using what we call a, a remand video facilities, which we have in this, uh, 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 in most of our correctional centers. I'm not sure how many, how many do we have across the country, the remand video facilities? Yeah, we have uh, quite, uh, we have quite a lot. Most of the courts are connected with our video here in the centers. So because of the COVID situation, we have maximized the utilization of those videos where an offender's matter can be postponed without him having to drive to, to the court. On the issue of the video former president being treated like any other ordinary citizen. Are you not confusing yourself and conflating the issues and conflicting remarks, particularly when you say he's going to be protected by the correctional services to the VIP? If some fellow is arrested today, I don't think VIP protection. Then why would you afford the former president VIP protection if you are treating him like any other prisoner? Okay, maybe let's, uh, let's bring the person who answered the question of protection to, to come. Uh, thanks, Samuel. I think the Department of Correctional Services is part and parcel of the Justice, Crime Prevention and Security Cluster. We have our own security arrangements. We have our EST, the Emergency Response Team, on a number of issues. So what I meant by saying that we'll be taking care of the security arrangements, I meant exactly that. For each and every inmate that is within our facility, when it comes to security arrangements, we take care of that. He's not going to have his own security people here. It's security of the facility itself. So that's what I meant by the security arrangements of the department. When I said he was handed over to us by SAPS and we took, we, we're taking full responsibility 
of all inmates within our facilities when it comes to their incarceration, humane incarceration of inmates. That also includes their security, the security arrangements. So that's what I was trying to put across. Just not to sound ignorant, but in essence, are you saying that there won't be designated bodyguards? No, no, there will not be any designated bodyguard for the president. In this facility, as I indicated, the, the, the security arrangements are for the facility itself, for all inmates that are within this facility. So I think it is clear now. Yeah. Mecca Deve will. Uh, she is the one who will be taking care of the former president. Here. She's the head of this center. Okay, thank you, Namusa. Uh, firstly, one will will take it to to profiling of an offender. That informs the housing of an offender, which we, we don't house as just merely housing, but it depends on the security classification of an offender. So he will go through that process that will put him in a certain classification uh, category, then will be uh, housed as such. I just need clarity on that classification that you speak of, because of the security, because of the stature, what kind of uh, incarceration or confinement to a prison cell will you have? Like, like I, I'm repeating to say, what informs the housing? I'll have to take you through the whole center. Which there is isolation, there is there is communal, there is single. There is there's quite a lot of 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 of, of categories of security of security. So it is safe for me to say, according to a security classification, that we will we will house in a such. Thank you. Yeah, I think you will you will also appreciate that. Uh, we also do not want to, to divulge a lot, particularly on issues of security and so forth. But uh, we have tried our best to be as transparent as possible, to the extent that we can, to give you the clearest indication that um, he, he will be treated in accordance with the Correctional Services Act and the policies that we have. And as she speaks, you can hear that she speaks about the processes that is undergoing, that is informed by our, our, our policies. So hey, thank you, you Chris. You can answer. <laughs> yes. Of course. Yes. Of course. Yeah, thanks, Minister. Um, some of the questions that are in the WhatsApp group have somehow also found their way here. I suppose that lots of them are frequently asked questions. Um, but there's one from Karen Morn from News24 which says Does DCS have clarity under which section of the Criminal Procedure Act? the former president was sentenced and how much of his sentence will he need to serve before becoming eligible? I think the other part was answered already, but the first question, just to repeat it, does DCS have clarity under which section of the CPA the former president was sentenced? Um, Head of center. Oh, this, the, 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 the sentence of the, of the ex-president uh, was under it was under section 2761i h of which there is no pro there are no provision like we mentioned to that uh, there is no uh, submission to say there is the, he must serve uh, he must not go before a, a quarter so that puts him in a category of 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 7611i so then he is he is treated as such so we will follow that following that that procedure that he, he, there is no stipulations on, on, on his on his sentences that he must say he mustn't go before before a quarter. So that's that's where our premise lies. Okay, thank you. Um, let me just see. The other question was um, again this has been asked, but I think more specifically in this instance, what amenities will the president enjoy? E.g. television, 
electronic equipment, potential special requests that he may have made, head of center. Again, we, 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 we fo we, I, will, I will repeat that we will be following the procedures of the Correctional Services Act that what amenities according to the, to the, to the groups because the amenities are also falls under the, the, the classification which you are, you are a medium, you are a maximum, what is it that you can enjoy. But in terms of, of television, everyone has, has a right to know with what is happening in the country and has, has, a, has a right to, inform, right to information. So that I can say, we will have access to, to television. Uh, it, yes, we know all know South Africans with cell phones are not allowed at the correctional, correctional centers. So he won't, he will have access to the public phone. If he wants to have a contact with anyone that he needs to contact, then he'll have access to the public phone. Where, wherever he is, he, there is a public phone, he will have an access according to, to the classification that he is on. Okay, I think this is then the last question from Aaron Gates on WhatsApp. Uh, then we'll take your follow-up. Um, minister, it's directed to you. I think the colleagues may have missed it. Has the minister met with the former president behind bars since his admission? Uh, I will repeat it uh, because I have already mentioned it. Yes, I have. And um, he is in good spirit and um, he, he is being taken care of. He has um, also had his uh, first breakfast. So he's in good spirit, he's, uh, he's jolly, good self, laughing, and uh, yeah, he's in good spirit. I have met him. Thank you. Okay, last round of questions. I'll start this side this time, Ms. Matego. Follow up. Uh, yeah, you should? To the, to the lady. Just regarding um, visitation work. How does it normally work? How many visits does an offender normally have a week? Is it once a week? How many phone calls? Just, just so that we can understand what exactly is the, you know, the type of country incarceration we have. Again, an offender who is, who is categorized as a maximum, he's, he's got, uh, he has to get uh, six visits per month. And, uh, and as it, it is, it is, it is, no, sorry, it is four visits per month if it's a maximum that includes, it's inclusive of, 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 of calls. It's, it's physical visits, like we, we all know what's now due to COVID-19, there are no contact visits or any visits to the center. So it, it, it will be counted as all our calls that, that you'll be subjected to. Okay, um, last round of questions, follow up, so what have you, Mr. Masego? Um, AFP. Okay. Minister Lamula, what else did the former president say to you, particularly on a political aspect, knowing that he feels abandoned and dumped by the governing party, and in particular, he feels as if the president of the Republic and of the ANC is not a genuine individual? Did he tell you of your traitors that you'll have sold him out and you'll have sell out? And then lastly, how has this divided the political, how has this divided cabinet in itself? knowing very well that there are those who are still allies of the former president, like Lindy with the Chile, and how has it divided the governing party itself in the last NEP that we had on Monday? Thank you. Okay, mm -hmm. AFP, News 24, ANCA. Uh, Minister, is it uh, definitely confirmed that uh, the former president will finish the rest of his sentence here, or are there circumstances under which he may be removed uh, from this facility to the Okay. Does it send a clear message to those who think that they are above the law that the higher courts can actually act? Because we have actually seen the likes of um, the former father chair, also Masab, also defied um, uh, the state capital commission by not attending, refusing to attend. Does it also mean that you know, the court will be actually coming after those who refuse to comply with the law? Thank you. Sorry, um, sorry, sorry, Pule, you mentioned. Yes, start and say your question again, please. Sorry. State your question. Right. Minister Pule, you need to from Minister Nepal. Does this mean that um, it sends a clear message that whoever thinks that they are about the law will be prosecuted? We know of the likes of the private chair, also Masabu, who refused to also attend the state capital commission, defying the law. Does it send a strong message that the courts are now in a position of patronage and actually act against those who think that they will not comply? Thank you. Of Abdila ENC, mine is just a concern around the thousands we saw over the weekend in Uganda that were willing to die for the president. Are you geared up enough for such 
crowd that could even possibly come this side. Okay. Minister, oh, I'll done. also just add one more WhatsApp just to close off. Um, and the question is a bit similar to the AFP colleagues, but a bit different. It says, it's Rory Sang from The Citizen, she says, should the former president apply for medical parole for whatever reason? What, what are the processes? And can this medical parole be applied to at any time during his sentence? Maybe one of the officials can answer that immediately whilst the minister goes yeah. down the other questions. Medical parole. Yeah. Head of the moment, head of the center. Medical parole, what are the processes? Can he apply for it at any point? Yes, uh, any, any offender can apply for medical parole, but we've got our medical board that does assessment, a depth assessment to check if he qualifies according to stipulations then. If the situation is going to be assessed by that body, yeah. it's the independent board that assesses the situation of the of the applicant. He yeah. may apply and if he qualifies according to that body, then he, he may qualify. Thank you. And um, any offender can. I, I, I deal with the medical paroles for, for lifers on a day-to-day -day basis and they do come from in terms of recommendations from the medical parole board. The, 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 the question whether uh, we discussed the politics with the former president, no, we did not discuss any politics. Um, I was just checking whether he's fine and how is he, and um, he indicated that he's fine and he's in good spirit, and, um, and uh, that um, uh, we can tell the country that uh, he is uh, taken, he's in a dignified uh, environment. So there was no political discussion. Whether cabinet is divided uh, by this issue or not, no, cabinet is not divided uh, on this matter. And um, as you will have um, seen, we have respected the outcome of the Constitutional Court. We waited to implement what the court has said, and we have got no role with what the, the courts decide. As the executive, our role is to develop policy and legislation and also to execute. So cabinet understand that uh, we all have to respect uh, the rule of law and comply with the with the judgments of our courts the the could be any circumstances where he may have to be shifted here I, I don't know uh, I, I will not be able to speculate whether there could be such uh, circumstances but as things stand now uh, the assessment is that he must be incarcerated here if any situation arises in future, it might need a further assessment and so forth. But at this stage, the assessment <coughs> points to, to the fact that uh, he needs to, to come here. Uh, and uh, I think I've already answered that uh, uh, we respect the rule of law as, as cabinet and as the government of this country. We, 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 we have to uh, comply with the, with the constitutional court order and whatever judgment might come from our courts. Mm. And uh, that's why we... We, we, we are here, we are complying, and uh, I think even the police have complied. A uh, government does comply with the, with the, with the constitutional uh, or any court order. The, the people willing to die for, for President Zuma, uh, 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 I'm not sure how to answer that one, but um, the, 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 the situation is that um, here, the, 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 there is a ruling of the Concord which we all have to abide by, which we all have to respect. The government is respecting the ruling. And uh, we will call for all South Africans to do the same, respect the ruling. I, I understand that there could be criticism of the ruling. Uh, it's allowed. But the criticism should be fair, should be based on facts, and should be informed at some point maybe by the law. But uh, also the criticism should be aimed to, 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 to construct a different kind of a jurisprudence. Judges themselves do criticize each other on their own. That's why you will see a minority judgment in some of the judgments. It does happen. The only issue is that the, the criticism must be fair, it must be based on facts, it must be based on the law. Uh, what then becomes problematic sometimes is the, is the overlapping of the criticism to personal aspirations, conspiracies, 
and uh, many other uh, things that they, I will not want to mention. What we can just say is that we call for restraint from the people of this country, uh, from whatever political organizations they come from, let them participate, and if they want to criticize, it is within their rights, but let it be done fairly. Uh, I think uh, that uh, is, the, is the last uh, question, Chris. Thank you very much, Minister and colleagues. Thank you very much for your kind attention and time. This then concludes our press conference on this matter. Thank you very much, colleagues.